Okay, uh, appeared to be recording again. Uh, yep, and discovered a few more things that I needed, definitely needed to document. Uh, because now I've had some time that I was able to spend before Lord in the Tabernacle, and was able to discover a few more, some more things and thought of a few more things that uh, would make up a nice uh, second part uh, to the Golden Arrow video. Um, and as you can see here, I've kind of broken the prayer down a little bit. I've color coded the section so we can see exactly what we're looking at. Uh, the first describes our uh, subject, which is the name of God, the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most mysterious, and unutterable name of God. That's a profound. You know, we're looking at being itself, qui est. And I, this concept, if you want a shortcut, because, you know, um, there is the external prayer, which is the form of it, you know, um, but then there's the internal understanding of the form of it. And they're not any different. They're supposed to be the same. But I, my, in my personal experience, it's, for me, in other words, it's tough to say all these words and have that proper conceptual understanding while we're saying the words. <laughs> I don't know, just for me, it is. Um, and so, I ha so basically, uh, to me, it's two different things. There's the form of this prayer, which is all the words, and then there's the conceptual understanding, which is the prayer part the internal uh, meditation, contemplation part of the prayer. That is its true effect. Um, I mean, I suppose that there are graces to be gained and our Lord will listen to the prayer just prayed externally without you know, meditation and contemplation, I suppose, because that's how the rosary is. Our Blessed Mother will... Uh, honor the 15 decades of the Most Holy Rosary that are said without even meditation on the mysteries. You, just the fact that you say 15 decades to her um, is honored and you actually qualify for most of the promises um, by uh, being faithful to that practice. So same thing here. If we just said the prayer and didn't meditate uh, what it really meant, and I mean, beyond the surface of the words, I'm assuming that there's graces to be had, that graces for souls, but the true, the true uh, meaning of this prayer is on a contemplative level. It's on a med, it's, it's 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 done in the heart. It's there is not the or the heart and intellect. I mean, it's the higher faculties of the soul where this prayer manifests itself. The concepts of this prayer manifest itself on a, an, an experiential level. And this first section here, this here, this section is the description of God himself. And it's the description of the name of God which is God himself, because the name of God is the manifestation of himself. Um, most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most mysterious and unutterable name of God. And what we find out is that God is being himself. That's the shortcut to this entire concept. So if we say all this, if we say, may the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most mysterious and unutterable name of God, and then if we think of one thing, that God is being itself, then we've, we've accomplished the conceptual aspect of this first uh, section. I mean, we know God is holy and sacred. Uh, we know he's worthy of our adoration, most adorable and meaning excellent. Uh, which is adored and glorified, which is in the second, I mean, it goes down here, it's kind of like a repeat, you know, adorable is adored and glorified is the action that we're going to, um, that we are performing and that we are asking be performed. Um, 
okay, and most mysterious and unutterable, beyond our comprehension. Yeah, name of God, and God is being itself. That's that is I found to be an effective shortcut for this. And like, it, and if it, this can be done, whether we're before our Lord and Blessed Sacrament or not, but I've found it to be extremely helpful in focusing uh, my mind, focusing the mind by connecting the fact that like our it can be very tough for me to focus on our Lord and the Tabernacle. But something that really helps me is reminding myself and recalling to mind, if you will, recalling to mind that our Lord is being itself. And then that it's like that automatically unifies my mind and my heart with God in the tabernacle. It automatically renews the union. And so it's like the first step. It's giving God the um, the adoration, the the the. Um, it's giving God that um, that respect that's due to Him. You know, as uh, as most holy, most sacred, and you know, most adorable. Um, you know, and uh, profoundly. Uh, <laughs> above our ability to conceive how wonderful he is. He is being itself. That is the, and that right there seems to unify my mind and my heart to our Lord in the tabernacle. So that's, um, oh, and by the way, if you want to develop strength in that, what it means to be God is being itself, um, I don't know, I found it to be extremely helpful to meditate on what it would be like, just think, what it would it be like if I was never created? Just think about that. Like, just hold that thought in your mind. What what would it be like if I was never created? And just meditate on that for as long as you can. And at a certain point, for me, it just hits me. Like, this is just a profound realization. It just hits you. Boom. You know? And it's just a profound way of connecting to God and how we were created. Because one of the for me, one of the most difficult things is um, having to recall all the time that I was created out of nothing. And that is a prayer. It's a very special prayer that Mary Regretta has that, she, that our Blessed Mother told her that she recommends that every morning we pray, Thank you, dear God, for, for creating me out of nothing. Please help me to do thy holy will this day. <laughs> and again, Mary of Greta, our Blessed Mother in Mary of Greta, the Venerable Mary of Greta, again comes through as the most holy advice. That prayer is so profound and helpful to us because it covers, I mean, our essential ignorance. I found that my, my essential ignorance in this life it's the fact that I was created, and I don't remember it. That's our weakness. It's like our greatest weakness. We don't remember being created. That's the problem. We, Because of the fall of man, we don't remember being created. Adam and Eve knew they were created. You know, there wasn't, uh, there's no gap in their, they're preternatural. There's no gap in their memory. They understand. They know. There's no, it's, uh, you know, they don't have to be reminded. They don't, it's not like, oh, whoops. Oh uh, yeah, God created me. <laughs> you know, they didn't have to go through all that. But after the fall of man, that's how. I mean, it really the fall of man is really bad, <laughs> really really bad. The more we meditate on it, the more we understand it. Um, but anyway, continuing onward, uh, the next thing. Okay, now that we have this, we know that God is being its itself profound. God is profound and being be profoundly holy, being itself. There are three actions that we 
are wanting to perform and are asking that be performed. And that is that God, be, and what this is, this blue section is the expression of, this is where we express uh, ourselves concerning the name of God, the un, the most mysterious, unutterable, most holy, most sacred, most adorable name of God. And we then express ourselves. Now, the first is, and this is a great way to break it down, the first is that he be praised and blessed. I consider that one action, praised and blessed, because they're pretty much the same. We're praising and honoring God. So that God be praised and blessed as an action. Loved, which is totally obvious. Adored and glorified. Now this adored and glorified, this means profoundly worshipped exclusively. The exclusively part is his excellence. Excel, meaning he's greater than all. He is the greatest, almighty, um, all, everything. <laughs> the greatest, uh, uncreated, the creator. So he is the most excellent. He is the, uh, the head of all, anything good. He is the source <laughs> and its creator. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... Uh, this is adored and glorified. That so that is profoundly worshipped in His excellence. Is adored and glorified. Loved is obvious. Praised and blessed. How great He is. How much honor is due Him. How much we love Him and how much we worship Him in His excellence. And we're asking that that be done. Everywhere everywhere on in heaven on earth and in the hells that's everywhere and by all God's creatures okay now that is the first part we might as well um, put in let's see here yeah just put in a, a gap right here a little thingy and make it black there we go and see ignore ones and see okay so this is the first part and this section is the the definition of what we are doing okay go save it okay so now that we have all this this is a full package right here every every all of God's creatures everyone everywhere we're asking to praise bless love adore and glorify God who oh, oh awesome holy God who is the God of is who is being itself. That's a full concept. And then we are asking, we, we're thus unifying our, our minds and hearts with the sacred heart of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar. And we, we are praying we are at, we are praying that prayer that say he is pray, we're asking him to pray that prayer with us and so we're praying that prayer with him in the blessed sacrament the key the first step the key that i found the shortcut that works is, is god is quiesced god is being itself and if if we're before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, then that's going to instantly, for me, it instantly unifies my mind and heart. No matter what I'm thinking about, no matter what distractions are in place, my mind and my heart go right to God in the tabernacle at that point. Once I, and it's it's like that, just totally clears out my mind. It's it's completely removes all the obstacles, and we go right to the heart of God. 
And, you know, this, this I, I mean, these three actions are now simplified. And I, I'm kind of, you know, I feel like I want to practice this prayer and practice it, you know, and get good at these things, um, these concepts. And I already know everywhere is easy. So I already know the devils, the souls in limbo, uh, souls in purgatory, as well as everyone on earth. That means the people right around me, as well as everywhere else on the earth, and also all the blessed in heaven. Um, so all, everywhere, all of God's creatures, everywhere. That means demons too. So, <laughs> and that's for them. It's not obviously they can't. They're not going to be doing these things. Um, but there's a. I mean, I have always thought, and I know that some people just take the hells and they try to make it like only about purgatory and limbo. Um, which that could be true. That it's only that. But uh, every time I've read this, I have not understood that that it, that that was the case. I may be wrong, <laughs> but I've always assumed that this gives us, this gives this prayer a power over the demons. Because they don't want to be around praising, blessing, loving, adoring, and glorifying God. And they, they, they hate God and they fear God. And so this is, it's, this is a holy prayer that because of, we're so united to God himself and we're engaged in this holy activity this activity filled with grace that's from the uh, depths of his heart and we're praying with him that is protecting us and so I think that's enough on this section I think you can see all this and I want to talk about some of the things that I've encountered um and the first is the Book of Wisdom, okay, chapter uh, 5. And if you scroll down, uh, starting with verse, um, let's see, uh, it starts to talk about what happens when we die and what it what was it like what was our life like that we lived on earth before we entered into eternity and the, it starts talking about it it says all these things are passed away like a shadow like a post that runneth on and a ship that passes through the waves Whereof when it is gone by, the trace cannot be found, nor the path of its keel in the waters. That's how our life is. It just disappears. It's gone. As if it never existed, like it was nothing. And then it goes on. Or as when a bird flieth through the air, of the passage of which no mark can be found, but only the sound of the wings beating the light air. And parting it by the force of her flight, she moved her wings, hath flown through, and there is no mark found afterwards of her way. That is exactly how how our lives are. They're so short, and there's nothing. It's just like gone. And here's verse twelve. This is the key, obviously. Or as when an arrow is shot at a mark. The divided air presently cometh together again, so that the passage thereof is not known. And then it goes on. There's more things and such. But here's the thing about this. This golden arrow, I don't think it was called an arrow by God. I'm not sure who named it. I think it was God that named it the golden arrow. I'm not sure. But... Uh, one thing, I, I feel that at the very least, God inspired the person that named this, at <laughs> the Golden Arrow. I have to look it up, see how the name came about. But I don't think there's any coincidence that, that this scripture is the reason for it. I mean, that this scripture is part of the reason for it being named as such. And, that, uh, and here's exactly how I've experienced it. When we practice the golden arrow prayer before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, 
it's like we're converted into the heart of Christ and our previous life. It's like we're being reborn into the heart of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. And our our and our and then there is nothing left of our previous life that we now <laughs> are living in the heart of Christ in the tabernacle. And our former lives in the world are now no more and, and we dwell with him continuously always to beg for the salvation of sinners. To to implore that God's holy, unutterable name, that God who is being itself be praised and blessed, loved, adored and glorified everywhere by all of God's creatures. And we pray this in union with our Lord Jesus Christ who only wants to save souls. In the Blessed Sacrament. So now... We're like the arrow that it shot into the sacred heart of our Lord. And this is, remember this, this is not made up. Uh, let's see. Uh, I actually lost the picture of it. Um, you saw it in the uh, other video. And I think this might be it. Okay, that's the big one. And it's going to be the other one. Uh, let's see here. Here. Yeah. Uh, all we got to do is um, bring it down. Yeah. Here. Okay. Saw the sacred heart of Jesus delightfully wounded by this golden arrow prayer as torrents of graces stream forth from his heart for the conversion of sinners. So you see that now that we're converted to him and we're making these prayers, doing the best that we can to have these sentiments and to make these prayers and these intentions with our Lord. It's like from the sacred heart of Jesus comes blood and water to convert sinners. And now it's, it's like our lives are now lost in Christ where... Here. The divided air presently coming together again. No passages are of his known. So now we live in Christ. We live in his heart in the tabernacle. And this is the devotion to Golden Arrow. It's, it's, it's a Eucharistic prayer. It's a prayer. It's a devotion to our Lord, the Sacred Heart of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And it... <laughs> It gives us the ability to unify our minds and hearts with him. Qui est, you know, I am who am, by, by through his holy name, <laughs> that everyone blasphemes all the time, sacrilegious use, and, uh, you know, sins against the second commandment, that all throughout the world, I mean, movies, TVs, books, everything, all... Blaspheming the name of, of God. And so this is a wonderful prayer to uh, reverse that and to <laughs> help bring about the salvation of poor sinners. And that's really what we need today. That's what, we, that's what God has always needed. And would that we had spent all of our lives devoted to this. And, you know, and we should be sorry. We should have sorrow for not having lived our lives in this way. But like um, our Lord once told, uh, I think it was a nun, a particular nun that was sorrowing over her sins. And he said to her, remember, when you are remembering your sins, always remember my power to forgive. So we cannot despair, even though our sinfulness is absolutely um, horrendous. I mean, our sinfulness is terrible and uh, indescribably uh, bad. I mean, we're just guilty, indescribably, indescribable guilt, levels of guilt that can never be repaid. 
Um, even though this is the case, uh, God has his mercy and he wants us to go to heaven anyway because he loves us. And uh, so what we want to do is then accept that with love and love him in return and then pass that love on to as many others as we can, especially in today's world. And now another benefit of this prayer Oh, first of all, let me show you uh, something that I found. Um, this is like the day before I uh, uh, like discovered this amazing thing about this golden arrow prayer. The day before, like before I knew I would, I did not know this was going to happen. <laughs> but I found this holy card with this scripture on it right here. It was it's I it's a holy card and it shows a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ and it looks like he's with two angels. But I'm not sure if these are apostles. But they look like angels, they could be angels. I'm not I can't be sure. <laughs> but anyway, our Lord is holding a child in his arms with both hands. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing <laughs> it really is and on the back it says this scripture um, Isaiah 49 uh, verse 2 and, uh, and so I found it in church and I decided to look it up and it's <laughs> this is amazing this was the day before I discovered this in the shadow of his hand he hath protected me and hath made me as a chosen arrow <laughs> in his quiver he hath hidden me and that's what this golden arrow prayer is God will lift us up to him unify our minds and our hearts with him to dwell with him always <laughs> like if you could see this picture oh it's amazing about with our Lord holding this little child with both hands like he's holding his hands together um, as if he was reading a book you know like if, if you held a book with both hands and you look down but then instead of looking instead of your hands be, palms facing up you face your palms inward to his chest and then the child is being held by our Lord and the little child is being held by our Lord's joined hands that are facing his chest and the little child is right there in his heart in his heart you know in his chest right there <laughs> that's so beautiful and that's what this uh, golden arrow prayer is that's what this is and that's what what we need I can't, can't tell you how long it's been that I haven't been able to unify myself with our Lord in the tabernacle but I love him anyway and I know he's there and now I have a way of uh, being with him <laughs> and it makes it so wonderful and I'm so thankful and uh, so anyway back to what we were talking about here um, one of the great benefits of this prayer is its target see the target of this prayer is the sacred heart of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar right here that's the target and so because we continually renew this intention because we're trying to pray to save souls. This becomes a habitual target so that we have a habitual recollection to our Lord in the tabernacle. Um, and so it becomes this habit, this wonderful holy habit where we can love souls with God to save souls. Um, and uh, I might as well say it now before I forget. I, I um, was able to pr 
pray the rosary normally and still practice this devotion because the part of the rosary is meditating upon the mysteries and our Lord is always present in the mysteries and you know we can find the crucifixion also in every mystery and so you know that allows us to have within the rosary meditation this 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 overall intention as well because we're unifying our minds and hearts with our Lord Jesus Christ in the mystery and so we have the same intention, as if it's the same exact intention. It doesn't change. We can still practice the golden arrow devotion while we're praying the rosary. You see, do you see the difference? I mean, I, this is like so crucial to understand the difference between reading these words and having the concepts in our mind and hearts. I mean, we can like so abbreviate this by saying God, uh, you know, is being being itself. And that everyone, everywhere, praise, bless, love, and adore, and glorify Him. And this could be probably be summed up in a single thing, in like just love. I mean, if you just focus on love alone, that's practically enough. I mean, you know, to get there, to make it, the devotion happen. I mean, obviously we want to be doing all of this, but I mean, I'm just saying just to get started, you know, if we just focus on love so that God, so we know God's in the tabernacle, he's being itself, and we're praying that he be loved everywhere by everyone, and we want to do that in order to save souls and to have that prayer in, with our Lord in the most holy sacrament and so we so we're unifying our minds with him as being itself we're, we're praying that everyone everywhere love him so that souls may be saved and that we want to we're asking him to pray with us at the same time and that is so amazing and so wonderful now we if we could get all of these together praise bless love adore and glorify and get that going all into one concept that is so amazing you know but, I mean, like, all these words are in a concept, you know, heaven, earth, and the hells, that's everywhere. That's a concept of everywhere. It's like, think in our minds, everywhere, below the earth, above the earth, everywhere, on earth. And by everyone, by everyone everywhere. So it's just praise, bless, love, adore, and glorify by everyone everywhere. And we're, you, we're asking our Lord, we're uniting our minds and our heart with our Lord, the sacred heart of our Lord, in the Blessed Sacrament or just the Blessed Sacrament, but it's the Sacred Heart of our Lord, Blessed Sacrament, to pray with us that all of God's creatures in heaven, earth, and every, all, of, all everyone everywhere praise, bless, love, and adore, and glorify Him to save souls. And that's it. We live, I mean, our, that's just amazing to be able to do that with God, and that God wants to do that with us to save sinners. And there is, I've I experienced something else where if we can keep that concept continuously over a period of like, you know, seconds, of several seconds, um, because it's like there's a, human beings, we have like a, there's a mental cycle that we're, it's like we're, the Bible says we're changed seven times a day. That often is understood as not being seven, literally seven times a day, but being completely changeable all the time. And so, um, I've, you know, it's um, like, I'll just, I have to go profane to get the point out, I guess. But um, they say that, like, for instance, a man will think about, uh, carnal things like the lower appetites every eight seconds. Okay, I don't know if that's true or or what. Um, you know, I don't think it's true per se, but there is something to be said. There's something about every number of seconds our mind goes through a change. There's some sort of cycle in our minds that changes. Not just men, but humans, I'm sure. I'm not a woman, okay, but I'm sure that all of mankind, that men and women both experience this. There's a change. There's like we, okay, and it's like a cycle. We can feel it. It's like, and it's kind of like I'm, I'm thinking of it as like a heartbeat. 
And that's the thing. If we can get the focus of this prayer with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament continuously, that where we don't let up the same concept and we let it go and keep it going for an X number of seconds, no more than eight seconds, I think, what will happen is uh, there will be like a heartbeat effect where the graces are beating like a heart where our hearts and our Lord's heart, you know, are beating for the salvation of souls. There's like that moment by moment where the graces don't let up. It just keeps, they keep flowing. Like, like, like they flow and then there's a pause and then it flows again and there's a pause. The heartbeat. And it's this changeable aspect where through every change, every cycle that our minds go through, we keep the same concept that we're continuously in union with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, praying the golden prayer, the golden arrow prayer. And uh, so that's I've, that's uh, just an amazing, that's the amazing fruit of this devotion when it's perfect. Um, it's continuous. And so let's all practice that so we can save souls. And let's pray, and we should ask our Blessed Mother and ask our Lord to help us to pray this um, every moment and to pray it um, correctly and as well as possible to save as many souls as possible. So <laughs> that's it. Amazing golden arrow. Thank God for this.